So how do you validate a self-storage facility? Now, this is something that is very near and dear to us as we own over a million square feet of storage across four different states, third tier markets, um, first tier, second tier markets. We've really seen a lot of different effects that the market trends and locations have on self-storage value, but more importantly, the operations. So we manage, operate, and own all of our own facilities. So valuations to us, is uh, we look at it very differently than let's say a buyer who's buying it and inserting a third property manage in there. Because what we do will affect the value and the value creation. So if you're looking to buy, the question is how do you, how do you value it? Do you do it by price per square foot? Do you do it by cap rate? Well, these are good starting points. So looking at a self-storage facility, generally speaking, there's two ways that people look at value. They look at it at a price per square foot or they look at it at the cap rate. What's the price per square foot? The price per square foot is what it is. It's the price, uh, if you took the total value divided by the square foot, you get a price per square foot. People look at this as like replacement cost. What would it cost me to build? Now, some people buy and they say, if it cost me to build this asset at $80 a square foot and I can buy it at 60, it's a good deal, right? Now, other people look at cap rates, right? This is the ratio of net income to value. So remember, net income to value, $100,000 to a million dollars price. We're gonna say price because price and value are not the same thing. So $100,000 to a million dollar price tag, that would be a 10 cap because $100,000 is 10% of a million. Cap rates are how people look and justify, or not justify, but determine the return that they're probably gonna get on their money, right? So if you have a five cap versus a 10 cap, a 10 cap is much, much better theoretically than a five cap. Although that is not true and that's not really how cap rates work, which you have to understand and we're gonna explain right now. Now, I use kind of a mix between the two, but I don't call it cap rates. And here, let me show you a quick example why. So let's say you have 50,000 square feet, right? There's a 50,000 square foot storage in your marketplace and it's priced at $2 million. Well, that's the price, so what's the value? You have revenue of 200,000, right? Now, on average, expenses are 35%. This is a general rule on average for self-storage facilities, okay? So whatever it is, 28 to 40 or, you know, whatever that is, the on average, let's say it's 30 to 35, we're using 35 for this example, okay? That means the net is 130,000 square feet or $130,000, sorry. So on a 50,000 square foot facility, is this a good deal? Well, it has a low cap rate, 6.5. Maybe you're in a third tier market and you're like, that's a really aggressive cap rate for this market. That's not super attractive, right? But then you look at it and it's price per square foot is $40. Well, that is super attractive because it probably is gonna cost me $80 to replace. So it's way below replacement cost. So if you have something that's way below replacement cost, but yet the cap rate is saying it's unattractive, why? Why is that? Now. The reason is because of this, your expenses. Now, expenses on storage facilities generally, generally remain the same. Whether you're under 50,000 square feet or above 50,000 square feet, the expenses are almost always the same because the fixed costs don't change much, particularly when you're dealing with the management side of the facility. You have to have somebody running this business, right? And those costs, cost the same to hire somebody, whether it's at 40,000 or 100,000 square feet. So the cost associated to run the facility, right? A 35% um, cost goes, is higher on 50,000. If it was 100,000 square feet, that's probably gonna be more like 30. Now, in reality, at 50,000 square feet, that cost is gonna be 40 or 42. Whereas 100,000 square feet, it's gonna be 30. Well, this 10% variation in the cost to manage and run that asset has a massive effect on your cap rate. Because remember, your cap rate is your net income to price. So 10% of the gross revenue gets taken out of your net. And that's a big number. Well, if the price doesn't change, it changes it. Why is this important? 
This is really, really important to understand when buying because this is the effect of value. So your revenue and managing that revenue, whether it goes up or down, creates the actual value because the value of your self-storage facility to you is simply how much money you're getting back, right? It's how much that asset is returning to you. What are your capital returns? Now, this can be very, very tricky. And one of the reasons it can be tricky is because people's, uh, people's underlying assumptions of what is a good deal change. To somebody, an 8% may uh, return on their money in a self-storage facility, that may be a great deal. I wouldn't accept anything under a 20% cash on cash return, right? That's not IRR, which is internal rate of return. The internal rate of return also is a little funny because it can be manipulated because that can uh, take in assumptions in the future, like the sell. Oh, but in five years, we're gonna sell it for you know $10 million. So your internal rate of return is gonna be huge. Well, if that plays out like that, that's true over whatever time frame it is. How I look at it is I look at it on a cash flow basis year to year. How much money am I going to make? How much money do I have to put in? And what is the risk associated with it, right? So value has very, really two things. You have how much money do you make, right? But then two, you also have secure. Like how secure is that asset? Because risk has to play in and has to be a factor of your decision. Okay. In third tier markets, this cap rate or this valuation should generally be higher because third tier markets, your investment isn't nearly as secure, right? Now, when we're looking though at buying, I don't really care about hardly any of those things. What I'm looking for is revenue that is mismanaged and a business that is underperforming. I would be happy to go into a market and buy a five cap that has revenue that has been mismanaged. There's a lot of upside potential there for me. I can do a value add. I can change some of the revenue drivers, increase the revenue, be more efficient on the expenses, expenses and really drive my net income, which will increase my year to year cash flow. That's how we find value. We look at the business operations and make sure that they're effective. This is done through a lot of ways, right? So in self-storage, you can sell things like insurance, boxes, services within the organization. But two, because you have different, lots of different unit sizes, lots of facilities have 10 unit sizes within there. There's supply and demand that are different from a 20 by 20 to a five by five. You have different buyers and your revenue per square foot on those different units are different. So now we're getting into something called dynamic pricing, which is a whole nother video that we'll share, but it's how we really leverage the revenue through self storage and we get it to hit its, you know, peak capacity, so to speak, not only in occupancy, but also in revenue. That's where we find the value and that's how we should look at it. So how do you value a self storage facility? Yes, there's a few simple ways, price per square foot or cap rates but how you should value the self-storage facility that you're looking to buy, not so much on the cap rate. Look at the existing expense and revenue and see if I purchase this facility, can I drive that revenue up and how am I gonna do it? And is this revenue known, right? Is it different? Is this the lowest priced facility in the market and I can quickly change those prices? Are they not marketing at all so they have a 30% vacancy when everybody else is 100% full? Or are their expenses super high for reasons that you won't have? And you can drop those expenses really quickly. That's how you find value in a self-storage facility. The value is in the operations. How do you drive your revenue up and your income up? And how do you lower your expenses and manage it efficiently?